start again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, I don't intend to read my uh, testimony since you already have it, but I would like to highlight some points. First, there isn't any dispute about the destruction of the tapes that had happened. Second, um, the rationale for destroying the tapes that to protect the identity of the interrogators is almost as embarrassing as the destruction itself. Uh, there are four facts that demonstrate this. One, the tapes could have modified to make the faces and voices unrecognizable. Second, one copy of the tape could have been maintained in a secure place. Third, the CIA keeps a record of who interrogates an interrogation. So even with the tape gone, there's a record. And fourth, the interrogators and others in the CIA know who did the interrogation. And so the explanation for destruction fails the straight face test. It's unnecessary to prevent the tapes from revealing the ident identities of the interrogators. And the destruction doesn't protect their identities. And so the question is, what does it tell us when an agency gives an excuse that plainly is frivolous? It says that there's another reason why that these tapes were destroyed. And the only plausible explanation, I believe, is that the CIA wanted to assure that those tapes would never be seen by any judicial tribunal, not even a military commission, and they would never be seen by a committee of Congress or any individuals in Congress. Over the last several years, when this uh, House and the Senate uh, considered the Detainee Treatment Act of 2005, the Military Commission Act of 2006, members have been asked their opinion about whether waterboarding is torture. They've been asked whether or not they support restrictions on CIA interrogation. And one of the problems is terms like waterboarding are tossed around as though everybody seems to believe that they know what they're talking about. One of the things that we would love to know is whether what those tapes showed was that the actual implementation of waterboarding was quite a bit different than people assume um, it would be. And in fact, it might have been quite a bit different from what the members of Congress, the four members who had a secret session, were told in an, in an earlier year. I mean, if they showed nothing more than what was already known to Congress, there would be no need for them to be destroyed. The destruction of tapes means that there will inevitably be disputes about what actually occurred during the interrogation. The tapes themselves would have been indisputable. But with them gone, we have the ultimate cover-up. The indisputable evidence no longer exists, and memories will undoubtedly differ about what happened. Now that the tapes have been destroyed, the Department of Justice originally asked Congress to stay its hand, not to investigate. And I think that would be a major mistake. The department seems to have um, changed its mind, at least to some extent. It's vitally important for this Congress to recognize that it's part of um, the interrogation process, that it regulated, to some extent, interrogation when it enacted those two statutes in 2005 and 2006. But this Congress decided not to restrict the CIA, at least not explicitly. And it decided not to confine the CIA to interrogation techniques that are contained in the Army Field Manual. And one of the issues that the Congress may well want to consider is, should the CIA be restricted? This is not a Republican issue, and it's not a Democratic issue. This is an issue about credibility of the United States. When United States officers act in a way that is regarded as torture around the world, when United States officers engage in practices which have inflicted upon our own military, we would regard as reprehensible. We would regard as violations of the Geneva Conventions. We would regard as war crimes. We would regard as things that should be prosecuted. Then it's important for Congress to look and make its own judgment about whether or not what's going on is something that can be done in the name of the United States. Um, there are a number of questions for Congress to ask and to demand answers to. Some of these are, what specific reasons were actually advanced for the destruction in 2005? And are those reasons set in writing? And who wrote those reasons? And were those reasons vetted inside and outside the agency? And if so, what were the responses? Were they vetted by the Department of Justice? And if so, what were its responses? The question that should be asked is, are the frivolous explanations that are being offered in 2007 the same explanations that were actually given in 2005. 
And why was the destruction of these tapes kept secret for some period of time? The longer the time, the harder it is to reconstruct what will happen. Congress already has a two-year gap to worry about, and it's important that Congress not wait any longer to do an investigation. Uh, there may be issues for Congress to consider about whether there should be restrictions on destruction of other forms of evidence. Um, whether or not the CIA should be required to maintain certain records for an extended period of time or perhaps forever is a, is a debatable question. I don't think the answer is clear, but I do think it's important that Congress should look to the practices of the agency and decide whether or not those practices are acceptable. Um, without meaning to be insulting, I think the fact is that Congress was effectively absent for four or five years from the debate about the war on terror after the attacks of 9-11. Congress watched as Guantanamo unfolded, and Congress did nothing to restrain an administration committed to creating a new detention regime and a new system of justice, if you think that term can accurately be used to describe Guantanamo. Congress finally awoke and exercised some oversight responsibility in 2005 and 2006, but that oversight responsibility largely rubber-stamped everything that the administration did. With the destruction of these tapes, it's clear that Congress no longer can afford to be a rubber stamp. Congress must be a co-equal, co-responsible branch of government, exercising the oversight function the framers of the Constitution so intended. Congress can exercise this oversight role without interfering with or infringing upon the Department of Justice. The Intelligence Committees have the ability to consider classified information in very secure situations. This committee can hold closed hearings as well as open hearings, and therefore adjust the hearings to deal with the sensitivity of the information before it. As the Chairman noted, back in the 1980s, I served as Associate Independent Counsel on Iran-Contra. Um, I also then represented the Department of Justice in dealing with classified information to, in that case. It was important that Congress get to the bottom of Iran-Contra, and it's important that Congress get to the bottom of the destruction of these tapes. There is no reason to believe a congressional investigation would jeopardize any future criminal prosecutions. What we learned is Congress got to be careful about immunizing testimony, particularly public testimony. That's a lesson of Iran-Contra. But we also learned that Congress can proceed full bore if it does it carefully with its own investigation, and criminal prosecutions can still ensue. Um, there are a number of questions that Congress needs to ask, a number of answers that Congress needs to provide. The most important thing is, I believe, Congress needs to exert itself to demonstrate that it can fulfill and is committed to fulfilling, to fulfilling its constitutional role of oversight over all branches of the executive. Thank you.